Hi everyone, uh, my name is Larissa, I'm one of the chemistry teachers with Lantana and today we're going to be looking at the first uh, higher level subtopic of topic six weights of reaction. So we're going to be looking at 16.1. So the first thing that we're going to start off with today is rate expression. So let's say we've got a reaction, so A plus B gives us C plus D. What would be the rate expression of this particular reaction? So the rate expression is always going to be rate equals to K. So K is going to be your rate constant. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So K is your rate constant. A and B are your reactants. So we only include the reactants in the rate expression. And small letter A and small letter B, or lowercase a and b, these are the orders of the reaction. So the orders tell us how increasing the concentration of that particular reactant is going to influence the overall rate of reaction as a whole. So A and B, so the orders of the reaction, have to be experimentally determined. That's where we get that information from. They do, however, correspond to the coefficients in the rate determining step. So that's what RDS stands for, the rate determining step. So what the rate determining step is, is it's the slowest reaction in a series of reactions. So let's say you've got reaction A, B, and C. B is slow while A and C are fast but they're all kind of part of the same overall reaction, right? So the rate determining step is going to be B in this case. And therefore, based on B, we would derive our rate expression. So the rate expression always comes from the rate determining step. So the lowercase a and b, the orders of the reaction, correspond to the coefficients in the rate determining step, but not necessarily the overall reaction. In terms of calculating the overall order of reaction, we add together the orders of the reaction. So it's gonna be A plus B. If you had a third reactant, then it would be A plus B plus C. So all of the orders added together. Now let's talk a little bit more about K. So small letter K is the rate constant. The rate constant is a constant for a particular reaction at a particular temperature. The only factor that changes the magnitude of K is temperature. So temperature is the only thing that can affect K. Otherwise, it remains a constant. So let's talk a little bit more about orders of the reaction now. So you've got zero first and second order. If something is zero order, this means that a change in concentration has no effect on the rate. And that's what you can see from this graph over here. So notice that this is a concentration against rates graph. So as we increase in our concentration, our rate is not changing. So if a reactant is zero order, that means it doesn't influence the rates of reaction, even if its concentration was to go up or down. It doesn't matter. Now let's talk about first order. So first order shows us that there's a proportional relationship between the concentration and the rate. So you'll see that this looks a lot like a y equals x curve. So what this means is that if we double the concentration of a reactant, this means that we're going to double the overall rate of reaction. So if a reactant is first order, this means that doubling the concentration will double the rate. It's a proportional relationship. And so you can see that it's going to be a straight line reminiscent of a y equals x curve that goes through the origin over there. Second order, on the other hand, shows an exponential relationship. So this is reminiscent of a y equals x square curve. So what this means is that if we double the concentration of a reactant that is second order, we are going to end up quadrupling the rates of reaction. So it's going to be an exponential relationship. So zero order, change in concentration doesn't affect the rate. 
first order, doubling the concentration doubles the rate, and second order, doubling the qu concentration quadruples the rate. And it's well worth being um, familiar with these graphs as well. So let's talk about units of K now. So the unit of K depends on the overall order of reaction. So remember, the overall order is going to be the sum of all of our different orders. So there are four different ones that you need to be aware of. So zero order, first order, second order, and third order. So with all of these, um, the unit for K changes. So let's go through it together. I've got a way of working it out that kind of makes it a little bit easier so that you don't have to memorize all of it because it's quite a lot to memorize. So start off, I want you to always remember that zero order has the exact same unit as rate. So that's going to be moles per decimeters cubed per second. And then the way that I remember it is first order, so first one, only has one part of the unit. So it's only s to the power of minus one. So first order, only one, so s to the power of minus one. What this means, however, is that if we look at this in terms of a relationship, if we're excluding moles and decimeters, this means that it's moles to the power of zero and dm also to the power of zero. So this means that over here, the change essentially has been minus one. We've gone from one to zero. And here, the change has been plus three. We've gone from minus three to zero. So we can carry on implementing those changes. S to the power of minus one stays constant for all of them, by the way, that doesn't change. So that's the second order is going to be mole to the power of minus one. Third order is going to be mole to the power of minus two. So for second order, the dm is going to the power of three. And for third order, it's going to be dm to the power of six. Cool. So I just wanted to reiterate, therefore, that technically, just by remembering the units for zero order, which is the same as rate, so change in concentration over time, and by remembering that first order, you only have one unit, so like a single part of the unit, S minus one, you can essentially work out mathematically what all the remaining units are. So I wouldn't encourage you to memorize this because it's just quite confusing to memorize, right? So you try to always kind of learn how to work it out and that's going to make it a lot easier um, when you get to your exams. So let's look at the next part then. So we're gonna look at a past paper question and we're going to determine the overall order of reaction. So here you've got a reaction between NO2 and F2 and this is the data. So it's always worth kind of starting off by writing our overall rate expression. So NO2, so remember I've got my concentrations of my reactants and now I've got to find my orders. So the order with respect to NO2 and the order with respect to F2. So that's going to be experimentally determined so I can look at the data over here. So if I want to find the order with respect to NO2, this means that I've got to look at two reactions where the concentration of F2 has remained the same. So I'm going to look at these two reactions to start off with because my concentration of NO2 has changed, but my F2 has stayed the same. And that's what I want, right? I want the other variable to be constant so that I can look at how um, a manipulation of this variable, the concentration of NO2, is going to affect my um, rate of reaction. So over here, my NO2 has doubled. So that's been times, whoopsies, times two. And my rate has quadrupled. So that's gone up by a factor of four. So what this tells me is that NO2 is going to be second order because I've doubled its concentration and that's yielded in a quadrupling of the rates. Now let's have a look at F2 then. So again, if I want to look at how um, the reaction responds to change in concentration of F2, I want two reactions where NO2 remains the same. So now I'm going to look at the first 
and the third set of data. So here, NO2 is the same. What's happened to F2 is that it's doubled in concentration. And what's happened to its rate is its rate has also doubled. So that's a proportional relationship. So that tells me that it's going to be first order. So doubling the concentration doubles the rate. So the overall order, remember, is going to be the sum. So it's going to be 2 plus 1, and that's going to be A. Okay, let's move on then. So earlier, I showed you some curves um, that were concentration against rate. Now, we've got to look at a different set of curves. But now for first, second, and third order, but sorry, for zero, first, and second order, but the units now are time and concentration. So what you'll notice are these are some of the curves that we saw in 6.1. So from any one of these curves, you could work out rate, because remember, rate is going to be the change in concentration over the change in time. So you could look at the gradient of any one of these curves to work out the rate. You'll notice that for zero order, it's a straight line, but first and second order are curves. Second order being a slightly deeper curve than first order. The best way to differentiate a first and a second order curve when you're looking at a time against concentration graph is by looking at the half-life. So the half-life is the time taken for the concentration of a reactant to half. Oops, let me just write that down, to half. And what you'll notice is that in a first order graph, the half-lives are constant. So they remain the same throughout. However, in a second order graph, this curve results in a half-life that is increasing with time. So that's the best way to work out and to differentiate a first order and a second order curve. All right, so this is just a little bit of a summary slide about all the different graphs that we've sort of looked at. Be really mindful of the axes. So this set is concentration against rate, so the first ones that we looked at. And this set over here is time against concentration. So to finish up, let's look at some past paper questions then. So now we're starting off with, uh, so these are questions from 2019, by the way, and you look at this. So we're being asked which graph is obtained from a first order reaction, and you're being asked for a concentration against rate graph. So remember, increasing the concentration of a first order reaction is going to have a proportional effect on the rate. So the graph that we're interested in is this one, B, because this is reminiscent of a, oopsies, of a y equals x graph, which is all proportional. All right, now let's have a look at 21. And 21 is one of the hardest sorts of questions that you can get. So you're being asked for the equation of the overall reaction and the rate equation itself. So remember, I told you that the rate equation is always derived from the rate determining step, which is going to be the one that is the slowest. So that's going to be the one up here. So if we were to write that down, that's going to be, whoopsies, rate equals to K, concentration of A to the order of the coefficient, because remember, the order corresponds to the coefficient of the rate determining step. So there you go, rate equals k a squared. So we're uh, narrowing down our answers to a and d. In terms of finding the equation for the overall reaction, we're going to add together all the reactants and we're going to add together all the products. So let's have a look. So I'm going to have 2a plus b plus 2c plus d. So I'm adding together all of the reactants. And now to add together all of the products. B plus 2C plus D plus 2E plus F. Okay, so the last thing to do is to kind of cancel out the ones that appear both on the left and on the right. So you can see that B appears both on the left and the right, so we can cancel that out. 2C also appears on the left and the right, and so does D. 
so we can cancel that out. And what that um, leaves us with essentially is 2a becomes 2e plus f. So that corresponds with d. So that's going to be your answer over there. So that's the end of this video over here. Thanks so much for tuning in. We've got another video coming in uh, for 16.2. Um, do have a look on our website for further details about online tuition as well as our revision courses. Thank you and I'll see you guys soon.